and look for the Sunday night edition of About Books at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Now Wednesday's House Oversight Committee business meeting. Members of the committee met yesterday to consider funding for the House Government Reform and Oversight and Judiciary Committees. Both panels are seeking additional funds to handle unexpected expenditures for this year, including possible impeachment hearings for President Clinton. Chairman Bill Thomas of California chairs these proceedings. They're 40 minutes. She ready to go? I'm going to have staff walk through it as quickly just to part with a little time and get her comfortable. Okay, you ready? You ready? The Committee on Oversight will uh, come to order. And according to the agenda, the first item of business is the consideration of a request from the Committee on Government Reform and Oversight for an allocation from the uh, Reserve Fund. And the Chair lays before the Committee a request from the uh, Committee on Government Reform and Oversight uh, and asks for its immediate consideration. Uh, gentlewoman from Michigan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Um, Mr. Hoyer, who uh, is not available to be with us today, asked in a letter form to the Chairman of the Rules Committee, Mr. Solomon, just yesterday, if he would hold a hearing on his resolution that would allow the entire House to vote on our deducts from the slush fund. It's, um, it's been very apparent, and as, even as we discussed the budgets of the various committees in the initial stages of the 105th, the permission that the Congress gave to the our committee to review the funds was quite a controversial one. And if you will remember, Mr. Chairman, that vote was very close in that we, on our side, did lose and allowed uh, the budgets to go forward, the slush fund to go forward. And since that time, we've made several deducts from it. Now, just yesterday, Mr. Hoyer sent, or earlier, a couple days ago now, a letter to Chairman Solomon asking for a meeting for his, on his House Reg 387 that would allow as we pass out the deducts from the slush fund, that the entire House would vote on it, yay or nay. Inasmuch as Mr. Solomon has not had a chance to schedule that meeting, and Mr. Hoyer is not here today to ask, I'm asking in his absence, Mr. Chairman, if we could hold off on action on any of these today until we get a response from the Rules Committee. I tell the gentlewoman that uh, it is not normal uh, in the House to put holds on legislation as is commonly done uh, in the Senate. Uh, and uh, I understand the import of the gentlewoman's request. Uh, the Rules Committee sets its own rules and its own timetable for consideration of ma measures in front of its jurisdiction. Each committee, in fact, does that. Uh, this has been noticed, and it's in front of the committee today. I know members have uh, extremely busy schedules, and I do know that the gentleman from Maryland uh, is uh, at an occasion uh, which uh, uh, requires his presence. Uh, I will just tell you that uh, based upon the circumstances of that event, uh, the chair would very much like to be at that event as well. But um, understanding the closeness of the gentleman from Maryland uh, to the uh, concerns of that particular event, I fully understand that, notwithstanding that. It seems to me that the uh, business of the committee is before us and that the committee should act. Since I believe I have a r relatively clear understanding of what the chairman of the Rules Committee would indicate to the gentleman from Maryland. Uh, and um, I, I will not uh, presume on the gentlewoman from Michigan's failure to have uh, experienced previous committee structures, notwithstanding the fact that, that she hasn't. But I do think it needs to be laid on the record, based upon her request, uh, that the procedure which was uh, outlined and approved uh, in the 104th involved an amount of money for all committees significantly less than had been spent in committees in previous Congresses, especially using the 103rd as the best example. All we have done is simply uh, hold back from uh, the committee allocations at the time that they're requested an amount that is then provided to a committee when unforeseen circumstances bring about a need for additional money. 
we changed the budgetary procedure from a single year allocation to a um, congressional term allocation. That is, instead of uh, the first session being funded and then a second amount for the second session, the entire Congress, both the first and the second session, are funded at the beginning. Since the entire amount of uh, committee funding plus the reserve fund is less than had been allocated in the past, uh, the chair finds it rather interesting that what we now have to do is vote on each additional amount, notwithstanding the fact, had that amount been folded into the committees as had been done historically, they would then be able to spend it in any manner they so chose. The problem, of course, was that in that spending pattern, they acquired staff, which created, and as we know, the staff being 85 to 90 percent of the cost of a committee's functioning, created a built-in increase in their budget for the next year in which they requested more money to cover the staff, in which they hired more staff, and it became a permanent ability to ratchet up the funds of the committees. By creating the reserve fund, we allocate money for a particular reason, as we're going to be looking at here shortly, and that the staff that's funded under this does not become a permanent part of the committee. That staff exists only for the period of the funding. They then revert back to their original lower base funding and must request additional monies when uh, concerns are in front of them. Uh, it just seems to the House, as per its vote, notwithstanding the closeness of a vote, a vote is a vote, as the gentlewoman well knows, and a majority is a majority. The procedure that was agreed upon was that the committees would get the funding that they requested based upon the knowledge at the time that they requested the funding and that the reserve fund would be available to be drawn upon. And once the argument is made, and she has in front of her a very detailed analysis of wh where that money is proposed to be spent, for what time period, and uh, uh, for which uh, categories and conditions. And when, when that money is spent, that staff is then terminated. And it goes back to the earlier committee structure. This process, the majority believes, not only keeps the committees at a more reasonable base spending level, but that it allows for uh, the exigencies of meeting concerns that might come up over a two-year Congress uh, and not build in an enormous flex amount for the committees to be able to handle any and all concerns. The majority believes that the reserve fund, uh, as it was created, uh, is in fact being used uh, in a proper way. I know the minority uh, would uh, prefer uh, a different uh, procedure. And at any time that uh, the majority wishes to offer uh, a change, it can certainly be voted on. Uh, we will have in front of us a proposal to once again utilize the reserve fund for appropriate purposes by particular committees. The majority can register uh, its support or non-support uh, for the allocation of that fund. It's being done in a public meeting, uh, and that is entirely appropriate and under the rules. Gentlewoman from Michigan. Thank you very much for the second time recognizing me. Again, as the, and I won't belabor it because uh, we are outnumbered here and I can count. Um, but as the fund was first established, and I could not think of the name, the proper name in the legislation I think was reserve fund. We commonly refer to it as a slush fund. There's been uh, one, two, three, four deducts from this 7.9 million uh, during the 105th Congress, two before us today. Um, as the fund was established, uh, your words and in the uh, legislation that established was for emergency purposes. I know that's questionable and, uh, and may not be uh, objectively defined, but we have always objected to how it was transferred and what it was used for. But I want the record to also say, as I close, that uh, Mr. Hoyer is not here today because of death of our, his colleague from Michigan's son who died suddenly yesterday. The funeral is today. And I'd like the record to reflect that is why he is not here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And all of us are uh, deeply saddened uh, by the uh, particular tragedy in the family uh, of the gentleman from Maryland, uh, Mr. Cardin. Uh, and our, uh, our sympathies go out to him. Thank you, sir. And that was the event I was referring to, but didn't want to be specific. Yes. Uh, with that, then, if uh, staff would uh, briefly review what is in front of us. Uh, in the request from the Committee on Government Reform and Oversight. Okay, Government Reform and Oversight has submitted a request for $1.8 million. And um, 
original discussions with staff was a submission for uh, $2 million. And after reviewing it, there were some discussions and the actual request was reduced. Um, we reduced their equipment request originally was $125,000 and we reduced it to $75,000. And they requested $150,000 for travel, and we reduced that to $100,000. And then administrative expenses, they had originally requested two hundred, dollars and we reduced it to $100,000, so that the, the request is now $200,000 less. And that's what they're requesting for the remainder of the 105th Congress. Are there any questions on uh, the reserve fund? Gentlewoman from Michigan. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman and members. <coughs> Mr. Conyers is unable to be here today, and I have from uh, both he and a letter from Mr. Waxman, who was also a member of the Judiciary Committee, objecting to the, really the way that the request has been handled. In both occasions, uh, Mr. Conyers, who is ranking member, got from his chairperson, Mr. Henry Hyde, who everyone respects, that the adjustment or the 108 million, 1.8 million would be to further implement their responsibilities. It's now shown, and I'd like to offer these records, uh, these letters for the record, that Mr. Conyers feels, as does Mr. Waxman feel, that Mr. Hyde was not just, or that the monies will be used uh, for other purposes. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to read those letters, if you will allow me to do so. If the gentlewoman could perhaps focus on the pertinent parts, or does she want to read it in its entirety? Pertinent parts will be fine. Fine, thank you. I'd like to start with the ranking member's letter uh, from Mr. John Conyers, who has submitted this in for the committee, and I'd like to make it part of the record. To Chairman Thomas, it has come to my attention that the committee is scheduling a meeting tomorrow to consider providing an additional $1.3 million. Oh, no. Won't do that one. That'll be for judiciary. I'll do the one for Mr. Waxman for... Yeah, this uh, is for Grock, right? Yes. Now. The Waxman letter is also to Chairman Thomas and our ranking member, Gadison. I'm writing to object to Chairman Burton's request for $1.8 million in additional funds for the House Reserve Com Fund for the continuation of the Government Reform and Oversight Committee's campaign finance investigation. The Government Reform and Oversight Committee has spent nearly $6 million on the campaign finance investigation to date. Even without any additional appropriation, the committee's expenditure will far exceed the $1.8 million spent on the Senate Whitewater investigation, and he goes on on that. I want the record to also show that in the last Congress, this a committee had $13 million budget, and if we approve this today, this will take it to uh, $22 million to date and still counting. Despite the enormous budget the committee has accomplished, virtually nothing, it has held four public hearings uh, over the last nine days. These hearings have largely depicted the work of the Senate, the Department of Justice, and the press. By comparison, then it goes on to talk about it. I'm going to now move to, I oppose continuing to I, I, while I oppose continuing to fund this investigation, it is your, if your committee decides to approve this money from the House Reserve Fund, the fund should be withheld until the proposed budget for the investigation is revised. Uh, and he goes on, furthermore, the proposed budget falls short of Thomas's, Chairman Thomas's pledge that the committee should allocate one-third of their budget to the minority. As Chairman Thomas stated in the Committee on House Oversight Funding Resolution Report of the 101st Congress, and he quotes you, Mr. Chairman, to ensure fairness to all members, the Republicans, when they were in the minority, argued that all committees should allocate at least one-third of the re resources to the minority. Then he goes on to say, our goal is to have all committees, with the agreement of the chairman and ranking member Moore, to provide at least one-third allocation, allocation of resources to the minority. In 1997, Mr. Burton has allocated just 25 percent of the investigative budget to the minority. When I brought this discrepancy to Chairman Thomas' attention last year, he noted that this allocation was acceptable, provided that our committee made progress to, toward the goals of a one-third budget allocation. I've been in this committee for a long time, and I know about the two-thirds, one-third, and what happened in the 103rd and 104th, but I, I think I, we should take Mr. Waxman's concerns very seriously, as we certainly do on this side of the aisle, and I would offer his March 25th letter to be included in our records for this meeting as a member of um, the Government Operations Committee, he is objecting to the 1.8. I thank the gentlelady, and I would just for the record point out that he was kind enough to include uh, in his letter to me and the ranking uh, member, Mr. Gagenson, uh, a quote uh, from me, and he was fair enough to include, uh, in essence, the whole quote 
And I think it needs to be focused on where it says that Republicans remain committed to achieving that goal of one-third. You'll recall uh, that, uh, for example, the Judiciary Committee in uh, previous majorities uh, management to provide it less than 20 percent uh, to the minority, and we needed to move forward in achieving the one-third goal. He goes on to quote me saying correctly, our goal is to have all committees with the agreement of the chairman and the ranking minority member to provide at least a one-third allocation of resources. Uh, and so that is our goal, and with the agreement of the chairman and the ranking uh, minority member, uh, we have moved significantly percentage-wise from the previous relationship to the current, and uh, I will do what I can uh, to continue to encourage them uh, to move even closer to this goal. There were many committees who had one-third, two-third allocation uh, when uh, your party was in control, and it's very easy to maintain that ratio. For those committees that had a significantly lower percentage, we remain committed to that goal, and we will work toward that goal. That was the quote. That is the promise. Uh, that was the promise then, and that is uh, the commitment now. Chair wishes to uh, acknowledge now the president, the presence of our colleague uh, from Maryland, Mr. Hoyer, uh, and uh, all of us uh, in the House. I will say through me personally, uh, know that you will have conveyed uh, the deep sadness that all of us uh, ha have in reference to the recent tragedy to our uh, colleague, gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cardin. Cardin family, understandably, is uh, devastated uh, by the untimely loss of their son, who was a wonderful young man. Who, uh, uh, it will be a great loss to them and, and to everyone who knew him. Uh, the rabbi's uh, comments today were, were very moving for everyone who attended the funeral, but I, I, I did pass along comments. Mr. Cardin and, and Myrna Cardin appreciate the, the sentiments of their colleagues. Uh, any additional comments by any members in terms of the um, Committee on uh, Government Reform and Oversight uh, Reserve Fund? Gentleman from Maryland. This is the Government Oversight, uh, uh, excuse me, the government, uh, reform. government Reform Request. Correct. Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from I'm Michigan I'm did acknowledge the letter that you had sent to the Chairman of Rules. Uh, and Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, as you know, we have had discussions about these requests in the past. Uh, these requests obviously come in the context of having a f uh, request from a fund that was provided for uh, presumably uh, contingencies that were unforeseen. Uh, it is our view that that criteria has not been met with respect to any of the requests that have been made. But notwithstanding that, as the gentlelady has indicated, uh, the fund was created, uh, which is the object of this request, as the result of the rule having been defeated uh, funding committees. There was a concern about the level of funding expressed on the floor. There was then this uh, contingency fund created that contingency fund was created for emergencies or circumstances that were unforeseen. Uh, very frankly, uh, none of the expenditures that have been made to date uh, were outside the ambit of the original budget request made by the particular committees. There have been at least two committees that have gotten a request. Uh, what I have asked and introduced a legis uh, resolution uh, to amend the rules, Mr. Chairman, is that the House have the opportunity to consider and vote on these requests. One of the things that the majority uh, made a very significant point of in the last Congress was that they believed that members of the House ought to be accountable. That is to say that they ought to be able to and ready to respond for their actions and for the actions of the House. Uh, in this instance, the request that is being made uh, 
was reviewed by the speaker. Uh, we don't have the committee chairman here uh, for questioning uh, as to why they need this additional money, which is contrary to the procedure that we follow in the initial budget request, where we do have the committee chairman present, and they do respond to questions, and they do justify uh, their request for their uh, budgets. The chairman has observed that, uh, uh, and I've quoted the chairman, uh, I think very honestly, the chairman has said that in this instance, uh, the actions of the House Oversight uh, are tantamount to ministerial actions. That is to say that once the fund was established, that the only action to be taken uh, to approve expenditures out of that fund would be the approval of the speaker. And while technically they come to the committee, as I understood the chairman's position, it has been that the speaker has approved this and the committee, in effect, is a pass-through. Uh, I think that that does not provide for accountability. It does not provide for the justification uh, having to be made to members of the House on the additional expenditures. I observed earlier today that the committees uh, have now received some 13 percent increase over last uh, Congress. Now that is a very substantial increase and is contrary to the uh, strong representations made by the majority when they took the majority as to uh, the fiscal restraints that they were going to impose on the institution. In addition, this committee will have received a 48 percent increase over the last Congress. 48 percent. Some, not you, Mr. Chairman, but some on your side of the aisle are complaining that perhaps the White House has received uh, or, or has hired additional counsel. Uh, they have received essentially a flat budget but they have rearranged some funds and have, in fact, hired additional counsel. The reason being uh, the unbelievable number of requests that have been made of the White House from almost every source. Frankly, Mr. Chairman, on our side of the aisle, we believe that is a coordinated, uh, considered, not a conspiracy, but a coordinated effort to harass, uh, in some instances, uh, yes, to investigate, uh, but uh, uh, to really uh, undermine the ability of uh, this White House to do the business that the American public expect of it. It is also uh, ironic that we spend a lot of time on investigations and not much time on education and health care. And uh, We're trying to move campaign finance reform. I don't know what the status of that is. Uh, we're not for the legislation that's being uh, suggested. But at bottom, Mr. Chairman, our position is that uh, we ought to withhold on this uh, uh, approval and on other approvals, one of which is the Judiciary Committee approval that will be coming up, and I will comment on that. Uh, but they are of a serious nature and of serious consequences to the House. Uh, it ought to be more than a ministerial function. It ought to be up to the House to say that, yes, these uh, objectives that the committee wants to accomplish were unforeseen, that they result from uh, uh, facts which have occurred after approval or some emergency. Uh, we therefore will not uh, vote to uh, approve this proposal. That will not make a difference. We understand that. Uh, but uh, we do believe that this is inconsistent with the accountability and responsibility that was uh, said to be so much the hallmark of the new leadership in the House uh, affected in the last Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for his comments. And just to make sure that everyone understands uh, what the new majority did, I want to put it in very clear numbers perspective. What I said, I believe, Mr. Hoyer, before you came in, was that we decided to allocate committee funds differently. Rather than putting all the money in the committees and letting them uh, build up their, their staffs, using the increased staff uh, as a base for increasing even uh, larger their committee funding, we thought it would be more appropriate to withhold an amount. Although the full amount of the committees plus the reserve fund is less than had been spent previously, and had that money not been in the reserve fund but had been in the committee funds, 
there would be no more of a um, ability to determine where that money was going to be spent. In fact, I think there's a greater responsibility in terms of where that money is spent. And I would just, for the record, make sure that the language that was used in terms of what would be the basis for withdrawing funds from the reserve count says, quote, for use in extraordinary emergency or high priority circumstances. Um, I, I know the focus on emergency is there for emphasis, but it is for extraordinary emergency or high priority circumstances. There are a number of reasons why the money would be voted. Just as one example, uh, in the 103rd uh, Congress, um, $196 million was allocated for committee funding. In this, the 105th, $149 million is allocated. So notwithstanding the small reserve fund to be used to provide temporary um, staff, which would then be removed at the end of a funding period and not folded into the base, we had a 17 percent reduction uh, in committee funding. Uh, the committee uh, that we're focusing on, the Government Reform Committee, is in fact a consolidation of several different committees that were present in the 103rd. The total funding for the Government uh, uh, Operations Committee, the District of Columbia and the Post Office uh, Committee was actually more than $25 million. Uh, in the 105th, the Government Reform Committee uh, was approved for uh, $20 million. That's a $5 million reduction. So notwithstanding uh, the previous and now this anticipated funding, uh, they are still not anywhere near the combined committees, uh, nor anywhere near the combined staff of those committees uh, in, the, in the 103rd Congress. When you add all of the committee adjustments together, it is a reduction of 21 percent over previous committee funding. I understand the gentleman's concern, but I believe his argument of accountability is simply not one that carries through. When the gentleman full well knows and has sat through a number of committee briefings in terms of the basic allocation on the way in which committees, once the money is given, have enormous latitude in where they shift the money. I believe there is greater accountability to the committees, a greater control of staff ultimately under the system that the new majority has adopted as opposed to the old. Instead of giving complete reign to the committees with as much money, $196 million as was given by his party, we have cut them back to 149 and then allocated only those funds where it is believed to be necessary uh, for an appropriate time without an ability to accrue staff. The gentleman was not here when staff reviewed the, uh, the request of the Committee on Government Reform and Oversight. The uh, gentleman needs to know that, in fact, the amount that's being uh, presented to the committee today is less. I believe the Committee on Government Reform and Oversight would say significantly less um, than was requested. Uh, the decision-making process that provides us with the package here today is one of interaction uh, and uh, which has been briefed. There are particular clear lines of expenditure uh, in this proposal. Adjustments have been made and I believe the gentleman's primary concern uh, can be summed up in the fact uh, that uh, the vote that will take place will place him on the minority side uh, and not on the majority side. I fully understand that. Uh, but to argue that this is less responsible, that in fact it was better to simply dump all the money, uh, considerably more money into committees and let them spend it how they saw fit, uh, in this gen uh, gentleman's opinion and apparently in the majority party's opinion, is not nearly as responsible as the procedure that we have here because we fully expect to wind up with money not expended uh, by the end of the period, which was certainly not the case in the old system. Any additional comments, gentlemen from Florida? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have uh, the responsibility of, in addition to this committee assignment, of serving on the uh, Government Reform and Oversight Committee. And I'd like to share with uh, uh, our House Oversight Committee some of the problems that we faced in, uh, in this investigation. Uh, probably what we've been up against and what we've had to face is uh, probably one of the biggest scandals in the history of uh, American government and also in campaign financing. Um, 
we did not anticipate what we would uh, what we would be faced with as far as uh, roadblocks and obstacles in pursuit of the facts, particularly in the foreign money uh, investigation. The White House has, in fact, uh, repeatedly stonewalled our committee in turning over information uh, to us. Last May, we had to threaten to hold the White House counsel, Charles Ruff, in contempt of Congress to get them to comply with the subpoena. In fact, I've been to the floor now on several occasions uh, 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 to uh, bring the question of contempt uh, for noncompliance uh, by uh, the White House. Uh, in fact, the White House did not turn over the videotapes of the President to last October. The White House uh, uh, has used frivolous uh, claims of executive privilege to stall our committee proceedings. In a deposition last fall, Deputy White House Counsel Bruce Lindsay cited executive privilege in order to avoid testifying about his conversations with the President about relating to James uh, Riotti. Last week, six months later, the White House finally relented and authorized him to answer uh, the questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee, 89 witnesses so far have either taken the Fifth Amendment or fled the country. These are unforeseen circumstances, and uh, I'd ask that this be submitted uh, as a part of this record, uh, just unprecedented of what we're up against to get to the truth in this uh, matter. Many of these uh, individuals are presidential appointees, such as John Wong, uh, Mark Middleton, Webster Hubble, and Charlie Tree. Uh, as you know, the Senate uh, recently closed down its investigation of this matter, only to find out, and this is from the Wall Street, uh, I'm sorry, from the Washington Post and also from the New York Times, that many questions left unanswered were left unanswered. As a matter of fact, we've, we have uh, been told by Director Free that, uh, in fact, that two or three million dollars of his original uh, estimate on foreign money contribution may, may balloon to as much as a hundred million dollars. Uh, and I think the public and the Congress deserves to know what went on as far as this foreign money contribution. Also, I might say that we did not anticipate that the Attorney General of the United States would reject the appointment of an independent counsel to fairly and squarely look at this uh, matter. Uh, and in almost an unprecedented fashion, the, uh, the director of the FBI had recommended for that appointment and then reconfirmed in the last few weeks uh, before our committee the need uh, and his, his uh, continued desire to see that an independent counsel uh, look at uh, these matters. Um, we have had to, get to uh, look at foreign banks, including the Bank of uh, China, which has refused to turn over information about the origin of uh, major overseas wire transfers of political contributions. Uh, we have been stalled, we have been stonewalled, we've been blocked, we've been obstructed at almost every turn to try to bring these people in to talk to them. We've issued 490 subpoenas. Uh, if folks think that, that's a large number of subpoenas, uh, Director Free testified that he's issued over 1,200 subpoenas. So we're trying to get to the bottom of this in a timely, uh, efficient, honest, and fair manner. As far as fairness, too, the lady, Ms. Kirkpatrick, stated uh, about the cost of this investigation. The chairman just uh, 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 went over the facts, but including all the costs, the staff tells me to date, we, we've spent $2.5 million rather than the $6 million submitted by Mr. Waxman. We can confirm that. And in fact, even with the cost of that, and even if you threw in the money for uh, the Judiciary Committee request, we're still far under what this committee spent uh, combined with civil service and post office expenditures. I chair the House Civil Service uh, Subcommittee. It was formerly with post office, a full committee. They had 54 staffers on just civil service. I have had to work with seven staffers. And the same with uh, the post office uh, uh, committee, which has been combined into this. So. Uh, we are doing this very efficiently. We're trying to do uh, our job and be responsible. But again, we've been stonewalled in an unprecedented fashion. And unfortunately, this does cost time and uh, money. Without objection, the gentleman's documents will be made part of the record. 
Um, with that, I'll recognize the gentleman from Ohio for the purpose of making a motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, let's move. move that the uh, request allocation be approved by the committee. Uh, the motion is to uh, request the allocation for the Committee on Government Reform and Oversight. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. You want a roll call? Yes. Roll call. Mr. Nay? Yes. Mr. Boehner? Mr. Ehlers? Ms. Granger? Yes. Mr. Micah? Aye. Mr. Gagenson? Mr. Hoyer? No. Ms. Kilpatrick? No. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Clerk will report the vote. Four in the affirmative, two in the negative. There being four ayes and uh, two nays, uh, the request uh, allocation is approved. Uh, the chair will attempt to uh, lay before the committee a request from the Committee on Judiciary. Um, and uh, my assumption is that a number of the arguments that had previously made would apply to this, but if there are any particular ones that you'd like to make in a relatively short period of time, This is a somewhat different matter, and frankly, we are, we've heard two reasons. Mr. Hyde yesterday told uh, Mr. Conyers, uh, Mr. Frank, and others on the Judiciary Committee that this money was for the purposes of looking at uh, the reauthorization of the Justice Department. Uh, when the, Mr. Conyers and Mr. Frank brought up that in the letter to the Speaker, uh, dated, I believe, in uh, December, uh, the reason given there w dealt with uh, various uh, operations of the special prosecutor. Now, I frankly have not reviewed the book that has been given to me, and so I do not know uh, specifically what basis is being used for the justification of the money here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned the figure $149 million. The information I have is the total House committee funding in the 105th Congress with such disbursements out of the uh, uh, fund that had been already made as of March 25, 1998, totals $176,430,794, which of course is uh, $27 million more than the $149 million. And if the gentleman wants to have a comparative number in the 103rd Congress equaling the 176, the gentleman's party spent $223 million. And which, so it is a comparable uh, amount as you draw down, 196 versus 149. Or if you choose the 176, then the comparable number would be 223. That is a 21 percent reduction. The uh, and with uh, presumably reduction in committees, uh, we can we don't have the time to belabor that. Uh, quite obviously, uh, if the gentleman would allow me to respond to his point about the scope of the Judiciary let me Reserve make Fund. One additional point. We understand the point you like to make with reference to what was in the 103rd, which you thought was wrong, uh, but you do not deny that there's a 48 percent increase in the revenues available to this committee uh, from uh, the 104th, your Congress, to the 105th, your Congress, a 48 percent increase, uh, so that uh, uh, it won't take you very long until you'll be far beyond the 223 uh, million figure once having made your point subsequent to the contract with America. That is our point. Now, with respect to this uh, specific request, we're not sure why the request is being made because the chairman told our uh, ranking member yesterday, not a long time ago, yesterday, much more recently than the letter, uh, which is the issue here, uh, that the reason for this was the reauthorization of the Justice Department. Everybody foresaw the, uh, the reauthorization of the Justice Department. Nobody thought that was an emergency. It is in the regular course of business, and we believe that uh, from I if that is correct, this is not justified. Now, with respect to if there is a, a deeper, uh, wider uh, perspective here, we believe that the matter is of such importance that this, in fact, ought to come before the House as a whole. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. I do not presume to speak for the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee. He speaks for himself quite well. Uh, but I think when you examine the reauthorization of the Justice Department, uh, no one, I would think, uh, has not noticed uh, uh, with some difficulty the ability of uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Justice itself, 
uh, to carry out internally its ability to examine a number of issues that, in fact, uh, the uh, Committee on uh, Government Reform is looking at, as well as judiciary. When we began the 105th Congress, uh, no one uh, foresaw uh, the uh, internal uh, dynamics that are now going on inside the Department of Justice. That is part of uh, the scope. I would just tell the gentleman on the second portion of the concern about whether or not any of this money uh, is to be utilized in dealing with uh, the special uh, counsel or special prosecutor. I can assure the gentleman that if and when uh, such an action may be necessary, uh, that I will uh, at least personally make this commitment to the gentleman that that funding will not come through the reserve fund structure. It will clearly be a supplemental and it will uh, go through the floor of the House. Uh, with that, any additional comments? Uh, Gentleman from Ohio. To put a chronology uh, into the record, if I could, of, of a chronology of conversations between uh, uh, a time frame conversation between Mr. Conyers and Mr. Hyde for the record. Uh, without objection, that will be made a part of the record. Uh, Gentlemen. I haven't seen that. Uh, obviously, I would like unanimous consent that Mr. Conyers have the opportunity to review that and place in the record immediately following that such observations as he may have. I haven't seen that, so I don't uh, know. Without objection. Um, gentleman from Ohio. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the request allocation be approved. Uh, question is on the approval of the request uh, on the reserve fund from the Committee on Judiciary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is approved. The committee stands in recess for 20 minutes. Oversight Committee will join their colleagues on the House floor this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. They're expected to debate legislation on federal paperwork requirements on small business, national forests, and labor management relations. You can see live House coverage on our companion network, C-SPAN. up this weekend on C-SPAN 2, on America and the Courts, a look at the constitutional vision of Justice William J. Brennan with Bill Lan Lee, acting